Hi students, thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about trigon trigonometric ratios and functions today. Starting with uh, today, we'll talk about right triangle trigonometry in this video and we'll have a separate video for the other sections. So right triangle trigonometry, what exactly is that? Well, right triangles, you know, it has a right angle and right triangles have the Pythagorean theorem to tell us about the sides. But trigonometry goes into all the triangle measurements. That's sort of the rough translation there. Trigonometry is triangle measurement. All right, so it's going to relate the sides and the angles, which the Pythagorean theorem never said anything about angles. So let's take a look at that. So the book will note, you'll notice as um, what they call these six trig functions, the six trigonometric functions. First things first, let me tell you, the only have to know three of them because the other three are related. So you don't have to memorize six things. You just know three of them and flip flop to get the other. Here's what I mean. Sine, cosine and tangent are just ratios of opposite side to hypotenuse, adjacent side to hypotenuse, or opposite side to adjacent. So what does that mean? From this angle, we use the letter theta there, that word, that letter you haven't seen maybe, is a Greek letter. We call it theta, some people call it theta. Either way, um, the point is we use x's and y's for side lengths, and we use Greek letters like theta on alpha and beta and gamma for um, angle measures. So regular you know regular alphabet for uh, the variables for the sides and then Greek alphabet for the angles just, just a thing so what it is is opposite side to adjacent side and all that stuff from this angle across from it that's the opposite the one touching the angle is the adjacent and then in a right triangle the longest side is the hypotenuse so you've got to make sure you identify all those three parts okay and sometimes your triangles facing a different way and we got to take a look at that. So let's take a look at this triangle right here. Well, there's your theta. Now take a second, you can pause the video real quick. Where do you think the three sides go? Where would you label opposite, adjacent, and the hypotenuse for this triangle? So you can pause it right now and try that. All right, now if you label it this way, that's excellent. Okay, why is it this way? Well, from the angle, across from it's the opposite. Touching the angle, right next to it, we're gonna overlay this really. That's the adjacent, and hypotenuse, that's always the longest side. Okay, so now I've made it ugly. Uh, make sure you label them properly. Across from it's the opposite, next to it's the adjacent, and the longest side in a right triangle is always the hypotenuse. So how does that help us? Well, let's take a look at a triangle. All right, let's say we're given this triangle, and let's make sure it's a right triangle. There's theta. And so if you had this much information, you didn't know this side, well, we'll try and find that, and we'll try and find the theta, but first, Let's set up the ratio. So sine ratio, we write it SIN. And again, it's a ratio of side lengths. So that's all it is, it's a ratio of two numbers. So from here, that's the opposite, which is three and 11 by hypotenuse. That's it, that's it? Yes, that is it. The sine of that angle is three over 11. All right, so now your question is, how's that useful? Okay. Well, this doesn't tell us what the angle is, but it tells us that ratio, and there's only one triangle that has that ratio. So what I could do is I could use my protractor and draw a really accurate triangle, and then with a very, very accurate three inches and then 11 inches, and then try and uh, measure the angle very accurately, or uh, reverse that. I could start with a bunch of triangles that I knew the angles for and then measure the sides to find out. And someone did that back in the day. Okay, so imagine this. For a 10 degree angle, you would draw it maybe like this. Someone would draw it, measure this length, measure this length, and that would tell them the sine ratio. And you put that in a table. You say sine of 10 equals, and you'd have to measure it really accurately. You could tell. My, 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 my uh, protractor is not the best for this, but if we had a really, really accurate measuring device down to a couple decimals, then we could measure these two numbers and we'd get like point something. Zero point some ratio. And then they did the same thing for 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, and probably everything in between, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Some engineer or some mathematician was paid at some point to make a very accurate table, and then they shared it with the world. And it used to be printed in all the textbooks, but now we don't bother. Now we don't bother because it's all been done before. 
and there it is, trig table. So these used to appear in the back of the book. Let me click on one of them. There it is. Uh, not secure. Uh, come on. There we go. All right. Wow. So someone created this table for one degree, two degree, three degree, four degree, five degree, six degree, seven degree, and these decimals are the ratio of the two sides of the two sides, the hypotenuse and the opposite side. So again, for ours we had the uh, three over eleven, and let's check that. So we look back at our, our triangle here, and uh, sorry, I think I said three eighths. It's three elevenths was our ratio. So what's the angle? Let's find that out. Well, I don't have three elevenths on here. What we're going to do is we're going to go try to calculate calculator three slash elevenths. All right, point two seven two seven two seven two seven. So then we go to this trig table and say which angle has a ra ratio of about point two seven. Ooh, that's really close, right there. Point two seven five six. So this one right here, point two seven. So uh, right around the sine ratio of point two seven five six. That means uh, 16 degrees. Our triangle was probably about 16 degrees. Okay, I didn't draw this very accurately. I didn't draw it to scale, so to speak. But if we drew it exactly three inches and 11 inches, or three feet and 11 in, uh, 11, in, 11 feet, three miles, 11 miles, whatever, um, three nanometers, 11 nanometers, the angle will be. Look it up in the table, and we got it. All right, we got it. There it is. It must be about 16 degrees. 0.2793. Now, uh, your calculator will solve all this stuff for you, and that's what we're trying to trying to show you on these videos, uh, how to solve all this good stuff. All right, so let's put that down. And so again, to answer, how is that useful? If we know the ratio is 3 we can look it up in the table and find that's about 16 degrees. That's the angle we would have. Okay, so how is that useful? Well, there's times when you don't have all the information, and that's what we want to take a look at. Here's where we. Here's what I mean. So let's say you're standing, uh, staring up at a flagpole, and you really need to know how tall is this flagpole. So you don't know the height. We're gonna call it X. We could call it H. We could call it whatever. But let's say you're standing 25 feet away, and then you look up. You happen to have a protractor. Now, who the heck brings a protractor with them? No one. But nowadays, with the cell phone, there is actually an app that will measure angles for you. you just tilt your phone, and it, it finds the angle. So. You could, you know, if you're bored standing next to a flagpole waiting for your ride, uh, you look up towards it and you see, oh wow, it has a 43 degree angle. All right, I wonder how tall it is. That's what trigonometry does for us. Okay, that's what trigonometry does for us. It tells us we're a way to find the height of that thing. Let's do that right now. First, we got to decide uh, what ratio are we going to use. So you can look back in the video or in your notes. We should have them. Uh, let's take a look. Let's recall what the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So which one do you use? Well, you got to use, there's only one choice, in fact, in this case. There's only one choice. you got to use the one based on the sides that you have. So I encourage you to pause the video for a second, see if you can take a guess which one, sine, cosine, or tangent, or if it's not clear at all, we'll go over it right now, but pause it if you want to check it. Now we're thinking x is the opposite, 25 is the adjacent, and the hypotenuse is there. Well, with opposite and adjacent, there's only one choice. There's only one choice that has opposite and adjacent. That would have to be tangent. So that much has been decided for us. We're going to have to use a tangent ratio. All right. So let's set that up and see how we go about it. Get a new paper here. So we set it up as tangent of 43 equals x over 25. What it is, is instead of theta, we know theta is 43 degrees now. The opposite side we don't know is x. Adjacent is to 25. All right, so we write that. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we're after x. So to get x alone, we got to multiply both sides by 25. We do that so these will cancel. Okay. Now, if your calculator has a tangent button, you can plug this in. If it doesn't, how would they have done it in the old days? Let's go back to our table here. And we said tangent of 43 degrees. I got to go up on my table. 43, and I got to scroll over to the tangent. I believe is that column there. Okay, tangent of 43 degrees. There we are. 0.9325. And I'm going to put 0.9325 into our equation right over here. And there it is. 
Now, when you multiply these out, that will give you the height of the flagpole very accurately. All right. Uh, so go ahead and put that in the calculator and let's check what we get. So it looks like it's about 23.3125. And we'll put approximately here because this is a rounding off. Okay, we round it off. Now, do we need to keep four decimals? No. In the beginning part from the table, yes. Or if you're using your calculator, your calculator will have even more accuracy. So if you use a calculator, you might get something slightly different. You might get 23.2 or 23.4. Okay. For math, I mean, we're talking about the height of a flagpole. 23.3 would be accurate enough for, you know, the height of a flagpole. We're not trying to measure it down to the nearest, uh, you know, thousandths of an inch. Uh, but we could, and but we're not going to. So anyways, that's how we do that. So what are the final things to know then? These set up the same way no matter what you're doing. You're going to have an angle or you're going to have two side lengths. You're going to have one of these things will be missing and your job is to solve for it. That's it. Which one do you use? Well, it's going to be based on the problem. If you have all three sides, you could set it up with either opposite and hypotenuse. You could set it up with adjacent and hypotenuse or opposite and adjacent. So it depends on which side you have. And again, this one, we only had opposite and adjacent. There was only one ratio for that. All right. So try them out on your own. And thanks for watching. Oh, sorry. One final thing just remembered. Um, for your uh, calculators, you'll notice it has radians or degrees here. Your calculator should have a button for that. The way you'll know is like if you do sine of 30, this is in radians right now, uh, I believe. Let's check. That, that sounds, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have a better uh, answer for you there than that. Sine of 30, if you put it in the other mode, there it is. Degrees, in degrees, sine of 30 will give you 0.5. So that's how you can sort of quick check it. All right. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Why is it exactly 0.5? Well, that goes back to special right triangles. And check out the next video for that. But again, for your calculator, make sure you know if it's in radians or degrees. Uh, if you're not sure, check an example in the book. And if it doesn't match, switch, switch uh, from radians to degrees. And then it should match. Yeah. Any other problems other than that, let me know and I'll help you out. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.